Hi, my name is Scott Evans. This is my 2011 Ford Transit Connect XLT, and its name is Igor. This video is sponsored by Dylan McGaster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. A lot of it came from the lifestyle that I was living. I did Boy Scouts, I did a lot of backpacking, a lot of hiking. I was outside most of my childhood growing up. I traveled for a good three years. I lived in Alaska for a while. I worked at the REI up in Anchorage up there, living in a hammock for three months during the summer. Ate canned food and biked into work, and it's just all about just that next adventure. I wanted to have, you know, an adventure mobile that I could go out. So I, I worked backwards. I bought, you know, the vent fan, the solar panel, I knew all the pieces that I wanted inside the van. When the time actually came and I purchased the van, it was very quick. I already had all the pieces, I just had to build it. And there was a lot of trial and error in the building process, looking at forms, what other people had used, you know, other recommendations of, you know, what other people thought was gonna work, what didn't work, and just kind of using my own, you know, reasoning to figure out what would apply best in a vehicle this tiny. All right, so this is my 2011 Ford Transit Connect. When I was looking for a van to build, I wanted to make sure that it was small, it was compact, and it wasn't too obvious. Upgraded the tires. Originally comes with 15-inch steelies. Upgraded to the 16-inch uh, with the BF Goodrich tires. Provides a better approach angle for obstacles. It helps you float on gravel and stuff, and it'll help you get out of some sticky situations. Added the light bar. It's incredibly bright. It's great for off-roading. The cab is pretty standard. I didn't really do much to that. Added a phone holder and then, you know, my seat beads for, you know, breathability and comfortability. Coming around here to the back, went ahead and added a ladder. It helps out a lot. It was super cheap on Amazon and I'm really surprised of how well it's held up. The deck, we added the side panels here. And so it's completely contained. Um, you can put like surfboards, snowboards up there and no one's gonna be able to get them out. It locks, wrap the existing rack with insulation for copper piping. That just protects any boards or any anything that we throw up there. It also has these super handy hooks for any type of hammocking or, you know, putting a sunshade out. Redwood planking that we stained. Uh, we got the Goal Zero 100 watt solar panel up here, as well as uh, just your standard locking bike mount. You take off the front wheel. Set it in there and I strap it down, keep it a little more stable. To head to inside. So this is like the little cooking area. There's pockets in the doors, stick on tile back here. Super easy to clean as opposed to the wood. Keep the fuel canister down here. Use a lot of the existing tools I had like for backpacking. So I don't have any stove integrated, just a one burner. It's perfect for what I need, just cooking. Super efficient, pops out like so. The legs come out and you can get to cooking. Since it's such a tiny van, it was really important to utilize any space. We're able to build this little shelf in here for knickknacks, spices, whatever, using the imprint that was in the door. Uh, this van does not have any back windows, so there's a space that we felt needed to be utilized. It folds down, it's pretty easy to fold back up if you need to get going and it just is held in place. This is all cedar planking, so it goes together really easy. It's as simple as Legos. Coming to here, this is the little kitchenette area. On a rainy day, you can cook in here on this countertop. It's more than enough room. Same thing up here uh, with the back door, the natural curve of the van. We wanted to you know, maximize the space, so having little shelves to hold maps or you know, coffee as well as this shelf up here. It's kind of kind of a catch-all, acts as a bookshelf. I keep more dry goods up here. You know, my stove, a lot of non-perishable items. Hooks are throughout all the van. Really helps with just keeping everything off the floor and making it feel more organized. The battery bank, which you can access through this little door here. I also store, you know, additional cooking materials, any dry goods, utensils, anything like that. For the battery bank down here, it is a Yeti 400 lithium. Nothing continuously draws from the battery. Uh, that's one thing that I had seen in the past that I wanted to avoid was having everything connected to one battery and constantly putting the strain on the battery. Everything in the van has its own internal battery system. 
so you can better regulate what you need uh, power for. Those are touch lights, so if you just need one for reading or whatever, you can do that. There's a sink here, the cutting board. This actually just drains out of the van. I use biodegradable soap when I do wash, but usually it's just water coming out the back. Sink's pretty deep. I'm able to throw ice in there if I need to, or just store dry goods. Underneath here, the water is stored. We did a little cutout to indicate you know, how much water is left. I just wanted to keep it super simple. I didn't need to do a lot of hard wiring, a lot of like water tanks and anything like that. So it, I mean, you can make it as simple as you want. This is just a five gallon water tank. This here was super cheap online and it's, it's got its own battery bank. I've never needed to recharge it since I charged it the first time. And you just turn it on and it pumps water. It's just a really, really simple and cost-effective fix for an otherwise kind of daunting problem that a lot of people have when they're building. I got the tablet so I can watch movies, relax on the bench here. I just use a cooler and I just fill up on ice. Um, it lasts three or four days. This is all overhead storage. This is where I keep, you know, snowshoes, extra packs, the tent. It's just better to have a bigger compartment to store things so it's not so specific for a particular item. Standard curtain rod that you can close. When this is closed, it really does black it out. We have the Max Air fan. You can set it to different temperatures so it kicks on in a certain temperature. It starts bringing in cool air. You know, start sucking out the hot air. So this is actually mounted underneath the deck, which turned out to be a really, really good idea. It's shaded, so when it's actually drawing in air, it's drawing in cooler air than the ambient air around it that's directly in the sun. This bench, I can sit two people on it, you know, cook, watch movies, whatever. It's, it's a nice place to relax. You can throw your legs up there and it's just wide enough that you can stretch out. The cutout here also helps with the space, so when you're sitting, you know, you have a little bit extra room back here to kick back. We opted for this kind of carpet material and it works out really well for, you know, anything that's got Velcro on it. You can stick it anywhere. It really helps keep things organized. A little table that slides out like this and then it actually rests between the counter and then the bench. So it provides, you know, workspace. You can straddle this and work. You can, you know, sit on either side. I find myself using it, you know, to prop my feet up as I'm you know, watching something on the tablet. Going into sleep mode, put the seats all the way up, slide them forward. And this allows me to put the tote down here as well as my bag. I use the pillows that are on the bench here. This is actually the sleeping pad. Um, this just kind of folds up. It's on hinges. And I use this carabiner to connect these two and it holds it up like that. Um, the bag with the pack raft and all the water gear lives up here. And I do have, you know, the multi-purpose camping mats that I roll out and blow up if it does get too cold. Before I go to bed, I throw out the rug, kind of do a hand sweep. A lot of people ask me, you know, is it comfortable to sleep on the floor? I don't mind it, it toughens you up a little bit. And there's been studies that say, you know, it's better for bone density and improved circulation because you aren't on, you know, soft tissues. It is small, but it's very versatile. Space is always an issue, but that kind of comes with the territory when you have a vehicle like this that can, you know, you can parallel park and have it sit in a compact spot. I wanted to be able to have the option to have the extra gear storage. So flipping this up, I can fit another two bikes in here. I can fit another kayak, a raft. So this has everything and more that I could ever want. You know, it provides me shelter, I can cook. Um, get out of the rain and kind of relax and unwind and have some of the amenities of home while I'm very far from it. You can choose whatever you want to do every day and you have that option every day that you wake up. And so it's important to make those be biased towards action and go out and make it happen. A lot of people will just psych themselves out in the whole in the whole process of like, you know, all these what ifs or, you know, all these unanswered questions. I was this way. Something simple as like planning a trip, like a bicycle trip. Uh, I remember the first century I did, you know, like 100 miles seems so like so far, but you put in a bunch of 10 mile days and then soon you work your way up to 100 miles. And it's just one of those things. You just take those first steps and, you know, it's a snowball effect and the ball gets rolling and pretty soon you're in a place that you never thought you'd be. It almost was like mechanical at some points where it's just like, all right, everything was 
decided what we were gonna do the night before. Like we need to work on the paneling, we need to work on the wall, we need to figure out the wiring. I see like little imperfections and stuff, but it brings back memories. Like, oh, I remember that day, you know, hour 10 and, you know, we skipped lunch just to finish this one project and I had sawdust in my eyes, but it all worked out.